Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the lab. Progress update for November 6th, 2022. I'm Ray Brown, and this is the Bessemer and Lake Erie NHO scale. So, pardon my mess, as usual, uh, but I thought I'd give you guys an update on where I am on the helix. So, this will be a five-turn helix. I'm uh, working on the fourth turn right now. Uh, inside radius is about 30 inches and a two and a half inch spacing going out and every turn I'm going up about four inches do an atlas code 100 for the helix um, and you can see the four switches down there are circuit breakers for the helix one for each track um, and the helix marks the start of my booster unit for the second level I'll talk more in detail about how I built the Helix in a future video. Um, so we'll kind of leave it at that. But I thought maybe it'd just be fun to see some test trains go up and down. So let's start with the first one here. So I'm going to push this train up as a little bit of a torture test. Um, figure this would be uh, pretty good representation of a size train for a local. Uh, the engine is a Norfolk and Western Train Master. It's an Atherin Blue Box unit that I bought at a train show at Rainbow Gardens in Erie. Uh, probably about 1992 on paper route money. And that is all original parts in there. Still running great. Um, the only thing I've done to it is put a TCS MC2 decoder in it. Um, I got asked about what grade the Helix was today, and I realized that that's actually kind of a hard question to answer, because grade is expressed as rise over run. So, how far up did you go, and how long did it take you to do it? And because we're going in a circle, the inside diameter track has a much different circumference than the outside diameter track. So the inside track, even though every turn is going up four inches and 360 degrees, the inside track is actually steeper than the outside track. And that kind of hurts your head a little bit uh, to think about, but I assure you it is true. Not a huge difference, but it's a little bit of a difference. Cars in this train are mostly uh, Accurail, KD couplers, and Intermountain wheels. And I think you can see that old train master had absolutely no problem pushing that train up that hill. Alright, so let's jump over, look at a short passenger train. Got the 454 pulling a short consist here. And this will be going through Shenango and crossing at XN and diving into the helix. So down in these first couple of turns, the helix is only three tracks wide. The fourth track joins in as the KO branch comes off the Osgood Viaduct and joins in the helix on the second turn.
and we're going to go off the end of the track. Well, that's what happens when you're trying to hold the phone and drive. Oh well, no harm done. Okay, let's go look at one more train. Betty's going to help. Got the 718 sitting over here with some southbound ore at Kale. And I got the sound turned off on all of these tonight because honestly I'm listening to the, to the joints and hearing how the train's running as part of my testing. And that's the start of the KO line. This will be Main Street, Greenville, and where uh, the train's crossing right now, I'm going to make that an underpass. Uh, you know, if you keep following Main Street out of Greenville there, going east, you eventually cross under the KO line under an underpass, so uh, that distance of road is just going to be much shorter on my layout than it is in real life. Same thing here, I'm probably just going to make like a stone, stone uh, bridge for a uh, little Shenango River here. So, eventually, someday, I'm going to have to build a whole lot of micro-engineering bridges. That's okay, I like building kits. But, uh, this at least let me run some trains and keep testing and I can get to building the real bridge someday in the future track on that temporary bridge is probably extremely dirty. It's an old track that's been in a box. I just put it down. This is only the second train to run across it. But uh, my version of the Osgood Viaduct will be about nine feet long when it's all done. Let's not run this train off the end of track too. So now you can kind of imagine, I gotta go around one whole turn yet, but you can picture that the passenger train and the ore train both came up from, from this way. So they're on the outside two tracks, the helix. So as they go around one more complete turn and they get back around again to about where that soldering iron is, they'll peel off and keep going that way on the second deck. Meanwhile, as they peel off and go that way, the inside two tracks will continue around and snake back off coming this way on the upper deck. So um, I'm really proud of this helix and uh, the planning that went into it. It took me a lot of driving up and down the interstate thinking about how this was gonna work. And uh, seeing it come together is definitely really cool. Uh, I guess the only one other thing I'd like to share today is uh, today was the Rainbow Gardens Model Railroad Show. And um, 
did make one really great purchase. Well, a couple of really great purchases, but a couple really good ones. One, tell me that's not a great picture. That's just a great picture. If that doesn't say winter in western Pennsylvania, I don't know what does. And then, uh, that's uh, on the hogback coming over Conneaut Creek, I think. And boy, if that's not a great picture. He had the same picture with the tunnel motors, but I like, I like the 800s better. And then this, I almost didn't pick up. Um, but the thing that got my attention is it has this really cool list in the back of uh, industries and what they carried. So uh, I will probably steal some things from that list as inspiration. Because uh, building the layout like this, you know, I, I want to build it for operation and it can't just all be coal and ore trains or it won't be very fun to operate. So we got to get all the other little industries we can. And I uh, haven't really done much with the, the yard ladder. Um, just been focusing on the Helix, making good progress on it. And I want to really get this Helix wrapped and start, you know, having a foothold to start working on the second deck. And I feel like I'm getting there, so it's pretty exciting. Anyway, thanks for listening. And uh, hope everybody's doing well out there. And I'll see you next time.